Hello, I'm Chris Bond from Iceberg Interactive, and this is Pax Nova. Pax Nova is a new 4X strategy game produced by Grey Wolf Entertainment. Following our work together on Dawn of Andromeda, in Pax Nova, you'll lead a team to explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. This is the current alpha build of the game, so you might see some animations and assets we're planning to change, or bugs we're going to fix before we launch into early access later in 2019. We're starting here with our transport arc on an arid planet, and you see straight away that the terrain is more mountainous than other biomes. Every game of Pax Nova begins with your colony exploring a planet, and your first quest will be to build your first city. Each hex has its own randomized attributes that make certain developments more advantageous than others, so you'll want to look around and choose an area that's full of these opportunities. This area looks good. You'll see we've got lots of benefits for farming, industry, and research, but we can't build here because it's on top of titanium, one of the strategic resources we can mine. One hex up from here gives us good access to that, so let's select it. When you complete quests, you'll receive a reward and begin a new quest. Now we have a city, Baldur. We need to advance it from level 1 to level 3. We can see all sorts of attributes we'll need to manage here. Citizens, prosperity, harmony, our financial balance, pollution, and defense. Citizens are the key to your faction's growth, and they'll populate over time based on your settlement's prosperity. Prosperity is influenced by factors such as food production, citizen unemployment, and pollution. Forests provide natural reductions to pollution, while districts we build can add to it. Over time, your city will grow and level up on its own once it reaches a certain amount of harmony. As a city levels up, its border will expand, and reaching specific levels will increase the city's rank, and with it the population of citizens and strength of defense. To start with, we've got one citizen, and they're unemployed, so let's give them something to do. We can spend our credits and turns to build new districts. A farming district can help us improve food production, so let's select that. Placement of each district is really important. The icons you see on each hex tell us which region is best suited to the different kinds of production we'll do. In this case, we're after the best green food production icon. If I build on this river, I get a small bonus in this area. So I spend 400 credits, and now need to wait 7 turns before we're all set up. To improve our districts, units, and other technology, we need to research. The research tree is split across 4 eras, and in each era we can improve our production districts, our units, and our scientific and medical districts. One of the other things I want to show you in this video are the options available for custom factions. Right at the start of the game, you've got the option to choose from 12 factions, or make your own. It's worth experimenting with a few to figure out how you like to play, but let's make up our own Iceberg faction. Every faction has a name, color, flag, and appearance. Where things get interesting are seals and traits. Your seal is a special condition for your faction at the start of the game. Some are head starts on your various attributes, such as extra prosperity, and some are more enduring tweaks, such as unemployment not affecting prosperity. Beyond this, every faction has their own collection of traits, and these can be positive or negative. We have to select three positive traits, but also one negative one. I think Iceberg wants to be developed, city defending, space masters, but eh, yeah, we're clumsy politicians. As of right now, each faction also has one exclusive technology. This will need to be researched later into the game, but once you unlock it, you'll get access to an extremely powerful ability and we'll be adding more of these for every faction until release. Beyond your custom faction, you're also going to be able to customize your own units, filling slots for attack, defense, and special. Special traits usually provide some sort of extra bonus, making a unit stronger or able to see further than others. New weapons can be researched, and the various attributes all affect combat, which we'll get to later. Speaking of units, it's worth investing in scouts as soon as you can both on a planet and then beyond. Scouts are a cheap unit to enlist, but weaponless, so having them auto-explore is most useful. You'll still be limited by the fog of war, but through scouting you'll get to encounter more factions for diplomacy and see where their bases are. Diplomacy is the backbone of any 4X game. 
and in Pax Nova, you'll encounter several other factions to make deals with and start wars. Here's what our relationship looks like with King Duosi from the Dynasty of Sons. This is expressed as affinity, respect, and trust. We can see that Duosi respects us. We've got better technology and have won against the Dynasty in combat. This respect is going to help us negotiate later on. Our affinity and trust are bad though, mostly because we're currently at war. But we're charismatic. We've got an open border agreement and an enemy in common, so if we could just end the war, I think they'd like us a lot more. So let's speak to them and see if we can make that happen. I'm going to propose that we sign a peace treaty, and as we're winning the war, we're pretty certain they're going to accept this. But that certainty means we probably could make some other demands, such as their faction seal. If you remember, our faction seal gives us a special perk, and so does every other faction's. Taking other seals, either by force or trade, will bestow on us even more strengths, and if we were playing a seal victory game, collecting 60% of these would win the whole thing. Seals are super valuable, but asking for this has made our proposal unlikely to succeed. Let's sweeten the deal. I'm going to throw some credits at this too. Okay, that's, that's probably too many. Maybe we can get away with this? <laughs> no, okay. It was worth a try. All right, we'll throw in some influence too. That should do it. And there you go. We've ended the war and taken a seal. Our relationship is now greatly improved, and this is going to affect our relationships with everyone else. Probably the thing I'm most excited about in Pax Nova is going into space. This is where you first realize how big this game is, and where you really get to start exploring. In theory, we can head down to any colonizable planet we find and start expanding our territory, but most of the time it's not that easy. Planets tend to be occupied with other factions, so that means you're going to have to invade and engage them in combat. Combat depends on a few factors. First, your surrounding territory can give your units a bonus, such as hills adding to your defense. Armor is weak against explosive weapons, but holds strong against kinetics, so you'll need to kit your units out differently depending on who you're up against. Different planets contain different geography and biomes, so it's worth expanding onto new ones as your faction develops. You'll need to stay on top of all of these splinter groups, meaning eventually you're going to have to manage your cities and units based on entirely different planets all over the cosmos. But watch out, you're not out here alone. In space, you might encounter enemy factions, star bases, pirates, or even alien creatures. Sooner or later, you're going to have to fight, and if you win, you'll be richly rewarded. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to show you more of Pax Nova when it launches into early access later in 2019.